Hi guys, Dr. Burke here. In this video, we're going to discuss and talk about how to get rid of the residual pain from shingles. It's actually really simple once you know how, but unfortunately, there's, it's really hard to find solutions out there. If you do searches, there's drugs, there's different therapy, but it doesn't really work. Uh, pain from shingles should normally go away, but a lot of times it doesn't. So here's the thing. First of all, shingles pain comes from a virus. Viruses are very, very different because they, they're not really like bacteria. They're not alive. They are a piece of genetic material wrapped in a sack and they're activated by your own cells. So if you had the chicken pox early on, they travel through the nervous system, end up in a certain nerve, usually in the nerves around the ribs, in the back and the front, and they just hang out there. And they wait, and they wait until you get stressed, tired, broken down and older. And then they come out and they kick your butt. They affect the, the nerve root or the nerve and they affect the skin, skin lesions as well. So it's very, very nasty stuff. Okay. So I'm going to show you a technique to knock out the residual pain. It also works for acute pain as well, but also to keep that virus in remission because you can't kill it. All you can do is keep it in remission. Okay. I'm going to show you how to do that as well. All right, so here's the principle. We're looking at someone's back. Let's pretend that your shingles pain is on the right side in the mid back and it comes around your back under your arm to the front, okay? It could be on the left side, it could be a little higher, it could be lower. So you're just going to take the concept here and try to understand what we're going to do. If the pain is on the right side, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of like a massage or acupressure on the opposite side over here. So you want to work on the mirror image side. Okay, and I'm going to show you in a second how to demonstrate that. So you're going to, wherever it hurts over here, you're never going to press where it hurts. You're never going to press where the skin lesion is. You're going to press on the opposite side. Now we're just talking about pain here. So you just have to isolate where does it hurt. Now let's say it hurts right here, then you're going to press on the mirror image side right over here. And you're going to work out any type of pain that you have in this side, but on the opposite, okay? Now, in this video, I'm not going to show you why this works. It's just going to work. And you can put your comments below, and you'll be quite amazed how fast you can knock out pain. There's some things you need to know, though. If, you, if it hurts on this side, and you press on the opposite mirror image side, it's going to be twice as tender as if you press on this side. So in other words, you're going to be quite surprised how tender it is on the good side. Yeah, I know, it's weird. But you're going to just keep working it out, and you're going to have to have someone do this on you because it's going to be hard for you to reach back there. I mean, you probably can get a tennis ball or something, but you want someone to just massage on the opposite side all the way through the front side until there's no more pain here. It should take close to about two or three minutes. Okay, uh, I've never had a case where it didn't work. So, um, And we're just talking about pain here. If there's skin lesions, that's a whole different thing, but as long as we can get rid of the pain, that would be a good thing. So I have my um, person to demonstrate this on right now. So let's have you come over here. So you could stand right like this. Okay, good. So I want to make sure the camera is okay. <laughs> we got the camera on this. Okay, so let's pretend the pain's over here and it wraps right around. We're going to be massaging on the opposite side. I would have the person laying face down and working out wherever it is on this side, you do it on this side. And it travels down a nerve, okay? And there's going to be a couple spots that are going to be excruciating. So you want to go light at first and just kind of work it out to their tolerance. And you just massage all the way around on the nerve root. Now, the, the key, the little secret to this is that there's like a lot of times you have a band of pain. What you want to do is find the epicenter of this pain on this side, on the good side, when you press. It won't hurt unless you press. And you just work that out and you find that nerve. There's going to be like around a rib. You're going to find one rib that's going to be so painful. So you're just going to stick on that and massage it and follow it down around through here. Okay. So now if it's around the front part, let's say it's, it's around here. What we'll do, you can just hold that there. We're going to work on the rib and work on the front part too, and we'll massage that right through in here. 
So we're just going to mirror image stimulate the opposite side where that pain is on this side. Okay? Thank you. So do you got the concept? Um, you're basically just working on the mirror image size. No one does this. They do therapy on the, play, the part that hurts. Well, it doesn't work like that. This will knock it out. And it has to do with what's happening to the brain. That There's a stuck flow of pain through there. And by pressing the opposite side, you're sending signals up to the brain because the nerve that goes down this side actually crosses over the spinal column and connects to this side. They're on the same circuit. So if you work on the other side of the circuit, you can knock out pain on this side. And that kind of neutralizes that stuck flow. And that's what pain is. Okay, so that's, that's how you knock out the pain. Now, what do you do to improve and keep it in remission? Okay, so there's a, d there's a deeper issue I want to show you out of this book right here, Siba. Okay, this is by Frank Netter, MD. And this, is a, this is on the adrenal chapter. The adrenal gland is on top of the kidney. They're stress glands. And the adrenal, and it has a little part where it talks about the adrenals control the susceptibility to viral infections. That is why when you go through stress and you knock out the adrenal gland, because the adrenal gland is the stress gland, the viruses can come out of remission. So what you want to do long term is start building up your adrenals, okay? Do things to improve the adrenals to really keep that virus in remission because viruses, people that get immune weaknesses or they're susceptible to viruses usually have weak adrenals. So you want to strengthen that. There's a, there's a link down below of a kit that I use um, to strengthen the adrenals. So it's more uh, corrective, but there's a quick little thing you can do to knock the pain out nutritionally. It's vitamin D. Three, okay? Don't use vitamin D2, it's D3, but you need about 50,000 international units, okay? A day. Now you might say, well, that's a lot. Well, what's happening is vitamin D is intimately connected to your immune system, and it's, what happens is that when you increase vitamin D, you can push that virus back in remission, okay? Um, in fact, think about, let's just think about a couple things. Uh, when do people get the flu, which is usually viral? In the fall, right? Like November? Why? Isn't it day coincidence when you start dropping, you go from the summer months, which is all the sun, vitamin D, to no sun. It drops the vitamin D, making you more susceptible to getting sick? Yeah, that's why. So there's a huge connection also with um, cervical... Um, uh, there's a certain virus that comes out in the cervix, and it comes out in the fall, too. It's pretty interesting. So viruses tend to come out when there's low vitamin D levels. So um, I'll put a link down below of what I'm talking about. But the point is that when you take vitamin D in higher amounts, you can uh, a lot of times push the virus in remission. But anytime you take vitamin D3, you need vitamin K2. Why? Because they work together. If you take too much of this, you'll, you'll get soft tissue calcium deposits in the wrong places. So K2 drives the calcium in the right places into the bone, and it works together with vitamin D, and you'd need 500 micrograms to get the MK7 version. The combination of this taken in the morning would be very, very good to help keep that thing in remission and then also work on your adrenals, okay? So go ahead and apply this technique and put your comments below.